So, you have a Harry Potter spin-off for me? Yes, sir, I do. I got your panic 3 a.m. phone call and got straight to work. Yeah, sorry about that. I just had the sudden realization that there might be more money to be squeezed out of the Harry Potter franchise. Over six billion dollars at the box office wasn't enough? Well, no, obviously you need more than six billion dollars if you want to buy Canada. Is that what you're working towards? I've said too much, so what do you have for me? Well, there was a gimmicky textbook back in 2001 called Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, so I figure we can make a movie with that. We're gonna make a movie out of a fake textbook from the Harry Potter universe? Exactly. Stretching it real thin, so tell me about the movie. Well, the movie takes place in the 1920s and follows this British guy, Newt Scamander, who comes to New York with a suitcase full of magical creatures. Oh, it's gonna be hard for him to get through customs with that thing. No, it's gonna be super easy, barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, when the customs guy wants to see inside the case, Newt hits this little switch that makes it okay for muggles. So it can be opened up safely without the creatures jumping out? Yeah, exactly. Exactly, totally safe to open up. So how come he didn't already have that switched on? I don't know. In fact, why doesn't he always have that switched on so the creatures don't escape? Well, they need to escape for the movie to happen. So Newt just doesn't care about the safety of the creatures? Oh no, he cares a whole lot about their safety. That's his number one concern. But he's not gonna take any precautions to keep them safe. That's right. Well, okay then. So anyway, Newt is gonna run into this wannabe baker guy, Jacob, and they're gonna accidentally switch briefcases. An aspiring baker from New York has the exact same case as a British wizard. That's what we're going with. Wow. So later, Jacob's gonna open the case and some creatures are gonna get out. Whoops. Whoopsie. So they're gonna have to track them all down and catch them before anything bad happens. Exciting. And at the same time, we have this whole other thing going on with this guy, Percival Graves. And he's trying to track down this evil cloud thing called an Obscurus. How is that gonna be related to Newt's lost creature storyline? It practically won't be. Is that gonna make the whole movie feel a little disjointed? Yeah, it's gonna feel like if you were trying to watch a movie at home, but your little cousin kept switching over to Pokemon. Wow. We're also gonna have this character, Tina Goldstein. Oh yeah, and what's her deal? She's actually a former Roarer. A former Roarer? Exactly. I have no idea what I just, what, what, what's that word? A former Roarer. Oh, you sound like a dog that's somehow beginning to learn English. An Auror is like a wizard officer type thing, and she used to be one. Oh, a former Auror. Okay, I gotcha. Yeah, and at the end of the movie, we're gonna hint that maybe she's into Newt. You're saying the former Auror adores the Forerunner? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what kind of fantastic beasts are they gonna track down? Oh, well, one of them is like this magical horn horny rhino. Oh, so it has a giant horn? Well, yeah, but also it wants to bang. Oh my god. Yeah, so we're gonna have this really fun thing where they try to capture it before it you know, goes to town on them. We're gonna have the main characters try to catch a magical rhino before it has time to sexually assault them? Yeah, pretty fun, right? I guess. I mean, I didn't realize you were going for an R rating. Oh, no, I'm not. Oh, so it's gonna be like lighthearted impending sexual assault and bestiality. Right. Well, okay then, that does sound fun. We're also gonna have this creature that grows to fill whatever space is available. Oh, very cool. Yeah, so they're gonna have to try to get it inside a teapot. And what do they do with it then? They put it back in the briefcase. Oh, so it grows to the size of a briefcase. That's manageable. Well, the inside of Newt's case is actually this massive place. Oh, so it's gonna expand to fill that space then? No, it's gonna immediately stop doing the one thing we said it does. How come? Magic, I guess? I don't know. Uh, using magic to explain logical inconsistencies is tight. Yeah, it is. So what else happens in the movie? Well, Graves is gonna sentence Tina and Newt to death without a trial because they had illegal animals. Wow, the wizarding world has some harsh sentencing. Yeah, so they're gonna be brought to this pool type thing that kills you when you're lowered into it. It's like this, this dead pool. Nope, can't call it that. Right, that makes sense. And how does the movie end? Well, there's gonna be a whole lot of destruction and a big magical fight. Wow. And it's gonna be revealed that the whole time Graves was actually this bad guy Grindelwald in disguise. Oh, it's like an homage to Scooby-Doo. Yeah, I love Scooby-Doo. So then Grindelwald is gonna get arrested. And so they're gonna plop him in the Deadpool? No, they say they're gonna try to hold him. Why would Newton Tina be immediately sentenced to death but not him? I don't know how wizard laws work. Fair enough. So is it gonna be hard to deal with all the non-wizards that witness stuff? No, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, because magic exists and I can just do whatever I want, remember? Right, so what happens? A bird makes it rain memory juice. That works for me. So what do you think? Well, to be honest, I feel like I don't know much about Newt or Grindelwald. Oh, should I add in more details? No, are you kidding me? That's valuable information we have to save for the sequels. You want to stretch this out into more than one movie? Oh, yeah, into a bunch of movies. That's the only way we're going to reach our goal. Of buying Canada? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be honest, sir. I'm not sure how far I could stretch this concept, though. Well, I'll tell you what. If you figure out a way, I'll give you Quebec. Oh, that's where poutine is from. It sure is. I'll see what I can do, sir.
So, you have a Fantastic Beast sequel script for me? Yes, sir, I do. Amazing. The last one made over $800 million, so if we keep churning these out, we're gonna have enough money to achieve our goal in no time. Our goal of buying Canada? Oh, keep your damn voice down. So what happens in the movie? Well, we're gonna have Grindelwald escape while he's being transferred by flying chariot to a new prison. How does he manage that? Well, he changes his appearance to secretly switch places with a prison guard that's loyal to him. Oh, so the guard is the one that gets transported and the real Grindelwald slips out the back door. No, Grindelwald latches onto the chariot too. Seems unnecessarily dangerous. Well, this way we have a cool action scene where he pops up in the chariot windows like a little cartoon character. Oh, very exciting. Yeah, and then Grindelwald wants to find Credence, so a whole lot of the movie's gonna focus on that character. He's the one from the first movie that barely said anything and had zero personality, right? That's the one, so I'm hoping that people are super curious about his past. Feels like we should have made that character a little more interesting if we wanted people to be you know, interested. Yeah, maybe. So what's his deal in this movie? Well, he still doesn't talk much and he still has zero personality, but now he really wants to learn about his family. Okay. And also now he's friends with Nagini. Oh, he's friends with a snake. That's interesting. I guess she is a fantastic beast. Yeah, well, she's actually still gonna be in her human form. What? Yeah, I thought we could do this thing where it turns out that Nagini was a person who's eventually gonna turn into a snake forever. Why would we do that? Because this way we finally deliver a backstory for Nagini, which is something that people have been asking for. For. I don't think anybody was actually asking for that, though. Well, they're gonna get it. Fair enough, so she's gonna play a pretty important role in the movie, I imagine? Not at all. She's just gonna kind of be there. So what's the purpose of her being there? So people can be like, hey, that's... that's the snake from the other thing. Fair enough, that is a good reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what's going on with Newt Scamander? Oh, well, he's back home now, and there are some weird vibes going on between him and his assistant. People are gonna be like, what is going on there? And where's that storyline gonna lead? Nowhere. Well, okay then. And we're also gonna have this whole thing where Newt is banned from traveling internationally. And where's that storyline gonna lead? Nowhere. Fascinating. Yeah, and then we're gonna have young Dumbledore show up and be like, Newt, I need you to go on an adventure for me, and I can't go because of something I'm not gonna explain to you for no reason. Oh, Dumbledore is in this. Are we gonna get to see Hogwarts? You're damn right we are, a little bit. Wow, we should have a cameo from Professor McGonagall, too. People love that character. Oh, well, actually, in the year that this movie takes place, she hasn't actually been born yet, so we can't do that. Throw her in there anyway, though. People love that character, but she's not alive yet. If you don't put Professor McGonagall in this movie, when I buy Canada, I'm setting Quebec on fire. But that'll ruin all the poutine. I want her in this movie. Jeez, well, okay, we'll have a cameo from Professor McGonagall, who's gonna be... Negative eight years old. Amazing. So who else is in the movie? Is Tina back? Yes, yeah, she is. And thanks to the first movie, she's been made into an Auror again. Oh, the former Auror's an Auror once more? Exactly. And in this one, she's gonna be all mad at Newt. How come? Well, there was a misprint in the paper that said that Newt was engaged to Lita Lestrange, but it was actually his brother. Whoops. Whoopsie. So yeah, things are gonna be weird between them the whole movie. Can't that entire misunderstanding be resolved by saying a single sentence, though? It sure can, but we're gonna artificially stretch it out for a super long time for the sake of conflict. Oh, uh, unnecessary conflicts are tight. And we're also gonna have Jacob come back. Wow, must have been difficult to write him into the story, seeing as his memory was erased in the last film. Actually, it was super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, he's just gonna show up like, hey, that memory thing didn't work, you idiots. Won't that kind of cheapen the emotional memory wipe scene from the last movie? Cheapen? I don't know the meaning of the word. Do you really not know the meaning of the word? Oh, please stop attacking me. Anyway, we're also gonna have Queenie in the movie. Ah, what's going on with her? Well, she wants to marry Jacob, but he's a nomad, so that's not allowed. Okay. And so Grindelwald convinces her to join his side by being like, you can marry whoever you want if you're on my team. Does he really like nomadges or something? No, he hates nomadges. That's clearly his entire thing. So why would Queenie join him? Because I want to set up some artificial conflicts for the next movie, so Queenie's gonna be kind of a dummy in this one. Thinking ahead, I like it. And how does Tina react to her sister going to the dark side? She has no reaction to it. Wow. We're also gonna have a whole lot of stuff going on with Lita Lestrange. Oh, we are? Yeah, she's in a relationship with Newt's brother, and she used to have a thing with Newt. Wow. We also see some of her time at Hogwarts, and she kinda killed a baby on a boat. What? And we're also gonna have this whole thing where she has a half-brother, and you think that maybe Credence is also her brother, but then no, he's not. Wow, so we're really spending a whole lot of time with Lita Lestrange, huh? Oh yeah, a ton of time. Well, I guess we have no choice if she's gonna be a major player in the series moving forward. Oh no, she dies. Oh, she does? Yeah, during a final fight with Grindelwald, she's gonna be like, run guys, I got this, and then immediately 
she does not got this. Wow, but does she buy them some time? Not at all. Well, okay then. Oh, we're also gonna have Nicholas Flamel in this. Oh, what's he gonna do? He's gonna be in the movie, so people can be like, hey, that's the guy from the other thing. People love recognizing things from other things. Yeah, they do. We're also gonna have him open a door, and we're gonna get to see the Sorcerer's Stone. Hey, that's the thing from the other thing. It sure is, sir. Your writing is so fun and so good. So yeah, pretty much the entire movie is gonna be the characters running around looking for each other, and then sometimes stopping to yell exposition at everyone. Incredible, and how does the movie end? Well, in the end, it's gonna turn out that during a big Grindelwald rally, a little Niffler stole this little jewelry blood oath thing that prevents Dumbledore from attacking him. Oh, well, thank God that in a room full of people, the Niffler stole the one thing that's gonna be important to the plot moving forward. Yeah, thank goodness. So what do they do with that blood oath thing? Oh, stay tuned. Did you just say stay tuned? Yeah, this is a TV show now, okay? Fair enough, people love TV shows. Yeah, also Credence is a Dumbledore now. What? So what do you think of the movie? Hey man, the Harry Potter brand is so strong that we can do whatever we want with these things. You don't think people are gonna start to catch on that it's just a big cash grab? No, I don't think people are that smart. So, you have a new Fantastic Beasts movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. Well, alright, so what's going on with, uh... What's his name? Uh, Nugget Scaffolding. Newt Scamander. Yeah, I don't care. Well, at the beginning of the movie, he's gonna help this magical creature called a Chilin give birth. Okay. But then Credence and some other Grindelwald followers pop out and kill the mother and steal the baby and give it to Grindelwald, who slits its throat. Oh, my God. Yeah, hope little kids don't come see this one, because it's gonna be brutal. Oh, boy. You've got some issues, I think. So what's up with this animal? Why did they want it anyway? Well, this freaking little baby deer-looking thing could see inside people people's souls, and sometimes they use it in wizard elections, and also it can see the future a bit. They use little magical baby deers in their political system? Yeah, they do, because we kind of have no choice but to have a fantastic beast involved in the story somehow. That's a good point. We kind of wrote ourselves into a corner with these titles. So anyway, turns out the mama deer actually had twins, and Newt manages to save the other baby. Oh, very sweet. Why did Grindelwald kill the other one, though? Well, he does some dark magic stuff with it, and now he can kind of see the future. Oh. And also, he brings it back to life and manipulates it so it'll choose him during the elections of the next big head wizard or whatever. Isn't he a wanted criminal? He is, yeah, but he gets some politicians to say that he's not a wanted criminal anymore and that means he can be a candidate immediately. Yeah, I feel like the wizarding political system's kind of nonsensical. Yeah, I mean, please don't think about it too much. Oh, okay. Although a bunch of the movie revolves around it. What? So anyway, Dumbledore wants to stop Grindelwald, but they have that blood pack thing where they can't even think about attacking each other. Wow, so what do they do? They think of elaborate ways of attacking each other. I guess that makes sense. But, since Grindelwald can see the future, the good guys have to go on almost nonsensical adventures, just kind of a string of things happening for a while. What do you mean? They need to make their plan so confusing and hard to follow that Grindelwald won't know what's going on. That kind of sounds like you're preemptively making excuses for your own storytelling. Nope, it's to confuse Grindelwald. Oh, alright, so what kind of stuff do they get up to? Oh, well, Dumbledore's gonna send this one guy, Yusuf, to go spy on Grindelwald. Oh boy, I bet that's gonna mess with Grindelwald's plans. You know it, sir. Later in the movie, Yusuf's gonna knock, like, three guys over. Oh, so... You know, mission accomplished. I guess, yeah, that doesn't sound super impactful, to be honest. Yeah, I guess it's not, but we're gonna do it anyway. Well, okay then. Oh, and also Dumbledore's gonna be like, hey, that muggle Jacob, he's such a good guy, let's get him on the team, let's give him a wand. Why does he do that? So Jacob could have a wand in the movie trailer and no other reason. Oh, he can't actually use it? No, I mean, he's a muggle, but this other good witch is gonna make it seem like he's using magic, and it's gonna look like an assassination attempt on Grindelwald. Doesn't he hate muggles? He does, yeah, that's his whole thing his supporters do. Why fuel that fire? I don't know. Okay. Oh, and also Jacob wants Queenie back, but she's like on the dark side now. Oh yeah, why is that again? Because. Right, okay, and so what's going on with Queenie's sister, uh, Tina? She was a big part of the last two movies, wasn't she? Yeah, yeah, super important character, but she's busy, so she's only gonna be in like one scene. She's busy? Yeah, she got a big promotion, so she's got some important stuff to do. More important than saving the world and her sister, who's with the most dangerous wizard there is? Yes. Oh, okay, and what about that Credence guy? Oh, well, he's Dumbledore's nephew, and he's dying, and he's sad, and he's in this movie, because he was in the other two. That is a good reason to include him, sure. Also, at a certain point, Newt's brother is gonna be put in this prison with these little crab creatures, and Newt's gonna have to save him. How does he manage that? By doing this. Oh, doing this is tight. Yeah, so he's gonna do that for quite some time and save the day. Hey, can I ask you something? Of course. What the hell's going on? Exactly. Right. So 
now that a bunch of stuff has happened, it's time for the wizard elections. Oh, it is. Okay, great. And since it's such a tight race, they decide to go with the ancient tradition of a magical baby deer kneeling in front of someone who's pure of heart. Ah, but it's Grindelwald zombie deer. It is, and so then it kneels in front of Grindelwald and the crowd goes wild and vote for him. Is there no way for them to verify that this baby deer hasn't been compromised? There's not, no. So everybody votes for Grindelwald. Dang. Yeah, so right away he declares war on the muggles and starts torturing Jacob in front of everyone because of that assassination attempt. Wait, do these people think that Jacob is a muggle or that he tried to assassinate Grindelwald using magic? It seems like it can't be both. Hey, shut up. So then the good guys are like, actually, that baby deer is dead and we have, it has a twin and we have it and this one will kneel in front of the real person who is pure of heart. And everybody just trusts that they're telling the truth? They do, yeah, because the zombie deer kind of just re-dies immediately. Oh, great. So then you know who this creature kneels in front of? You know who's pure of heart? I mean, if I had to guess, I'd say Jacob, right? Because then Grindelwald and all his followers would be confronted with the idea that a muggle can also be pure hearted. And also, I think Dumbledore was maybe hinting at this, right? Isn't that why he brought him on the team? Because he's a good guy. Oh, yeah, that would have been pretty good, I guess. I have it kneeling in front of Dumbledore. What's the logic there? People like Dumbledore. Oh, that is true. A lot of brand recognition on the name Dumbledore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Dumbledore becomes this lead wizard or whatever? Well, actually, he's like, no, thank you, I don't want it. So then the baby deer kneels in front of this other candidate, Santo, so then she gets elected. Oh, is that a good thing? I guess. I mean, we're not really gonna explain who she is or what her deal is. Well, I'm sure she'll be fine. Yeah, maybe. So then Grindelwald is gonna attack Credence and Dumbledore's gotta stop him. Oh, it's gonna be hard for him to do that with that whole blood pact thing. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, see, because Dumbledore stepped in, that breaks the blood pact because of fate, and now they can fight again. Why does that break the blood pact? Magic. How does that make sense, though? It's magic. Okay. So then they have just the most desaturated fight. Very exciting. Yeah, but they don't really want to kill each other because they have this very deep, very easy to edit out for China love for each other. Very romantic, except for in the Chinese market. And so then Grindelwald kind of retreats and jumps off a wall. Where does he go? Into the sequel, if this makes money. Got it. Well, it better make money, or I don't know how I'm gonna manage to buy Canada. That doesn't seem like a realistic goal, sir. I want that poutine! Alright, so then we wrap things up and Jacob and Queenie get married. Oh, is she just all forgiven for having helped Grindelwald almost rise to power? Yeah, she's all good. A very quick redemption. So what do you think? Oh, it sounds like a great movie. I do think we're gonna have to play it safe and recast Johnny Depp, though, just cause, you know, there's a bunch of stories out there. Just play it safe. No problem. Maybe we get Mads Mikkelsen to play Grindelwald. Yeah, I mean, that sounds great. How do we explain the sudden change in appearance between the movies, though? We just don't. Alright, I mean, that feels a little weird, but at least this way we're sure we're not associated with any potentially controversial actors. We'll be in the clear, yeah. Hi everybody, Ryan here. Thanks for watching that pitch meeting. I hope you liked it. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to this new pitch meeting only YouTube channel. That would help out a lot, because then the YouTube algorithm would see that and be like, hey, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Also hit the like button, please.